definitely it's a good thing to have the airport right here for the businesses also. The more you get busy, the more we get busy. It was much busier than it is now. It keeps the noise levels down. Flight instructors were considered an essential service, but we wouldn't be here, frankly, if it weren't for this airport. We got quite a bit of business from it. You can come in for a free cupcake. There is a serious shortage of pilots. What do we do next? Cancel trips. Hi guys, it's John from Sling Pilot Academy. This week, we're gonna highlight the businesses around the area that our pilots and students frequently go to, have their meals, eat and drink, and celebrate their successes. We're gonna see what effect this has on the community and the businesses in the community. Enjoy the video. I'm Alessandro, I'm uh, the owner of Cafe Trevenezia here in Torrance. It's an Italian coffee shop, really authentic, like you would find just in Italy. And uh, well, yeah, the shop was uh, was open on April 18th, so it's been already over five years. It's the only location. What we do here is try to offer a real, like, authentic experience. Life, if you were walking in the street, you know, of Italy, where I'm from, so you get authentic, you know, coffee, panini made with a fresh ciabatta bread, you know. The croissant is correctly like, like, just like in Italy. And, and the ambience also, which recreate exactly what you would find anywhere in the north of Italy where I'm from. So people come here because they like the experience. They feel just like they're in Italy. So that's why people love the place. Yeah, now we got a very nice circle of regular customer that comes every day. Torrance is a very nice community. It's safe, it's clean, and yeah, we love Torrance, definitely. I live five minutes from here, so <laughs> it's perfect, you know? No commutes, yeah. I, I love Torrance. Yeah, it's a great community, yes. I lived in Torrance over 10 years. Over 10 years, yeah. Great place to live, definitely. It's been a big help for my business being close to the airport and a school like Sling. I, I have a lot of customers coming and uh, actually I got a couple of great employees over the years. <laughs> very wonderful guys that actually want to still work here. <laughs> and so it's been very, very helpful. Definitely. has <laughs> been good. It's good. Yeah, definitely. I know one of your uh, instructors, Sam, has been coming for years too. He's here all the time, yeah? <laughs> I don't think it's of any negative impact as far as noise to live close to the airport doesn't affect me in any way, absolutely. So I don't know exactly what it is about, I guess. I don't hear anything. <laughs> very little, very little, very little. Maybe sometimes if there's an helicopter maybe going by, but the airplane, not really, they don't make that much noise. And definitely it's a good thing to have the airport right here, I think, for the businesses also. Being so close, it helps, you know. We, we, we get busy like constantly, like every day. So it, it helps all the surrounding business, not only me, but the other ones too. You know, all the restaurants and coffee shops in the area can benefit from, you know, being close to the airport, definitely. The more you get busy, the more we get busy, you know, definitely. It works both ways. Hi, my name is Tom Lagrillius. Uh, I'm a physician. That's my main role in life. I'm um, the founder and managing partner of a three doctor uh, primary care and geriatrics practice in Torrance that's located right off the edge of Torrance Airport. As you can see, I'm also a pilot. Uh, we're sitting here in my hangar at Torrance Airport. I've had this hangar for about 10, 12 years. I've had an airplane on this airport and flown out of this airport uh, since the late 70s and owned an airplane here at this airport beginning in about 1980. Uh, actually, this airport uh, is busier now than it was, say, during COVID or, or, or a little bit before. But when I first came to start flying out of this airport, it was much busier than it is now. There was a time, and may, my recollection may be a little wrong, but there was a time when Torrance Airport was considered one of the busiest general aviation airports in the entire United States. It was either second or third or fourth uh, among general aviation airports in terms of takeoffs and landings in the entire country. And back in those days, they had no restrictions on what pilots did. Uh, there was little or no effort to keep the noise down. Uh, takeoffs and landings were allowed 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Now we're very cautious. We allow landings all the time because we can't let planes get stuck in the air. 
But takeoffs are restricted uh, so that people do not take off at night after 10 o'clock and before 7 or 8 in the morning. There are no takeoffs from the runways. Uh, and there are periods of time where other activities are somewhat restricted in terms of noise. And we will go to a great efforts to keep the noise away from the local communities. That didn't go on at all in the 70s, 80s, perhaps 90s, when this airport was much busier than it is now. There were very few complaints back in those days. There seem to be more complaints now. That's unfortunate. We need to find a way to accommodate uh, all people who are involved in the airport's uh, function, uh, and we should work hard on that. So I was asked to do this little video because of my experience and my love for Torrance Airport and how important I feel this airport is to the city and to the whole region's economy. Uh, Torrance Airport has been here since the 1940s. Uh, it was originally a military airport. It trained uh, fighter pilots, and later on it became a really important regional airport center for the area. And it attracted an awful lot of people. My practice is called Sky Park Preferred Family Care because it's right next to the airport. And I'm here partly because of that uh, location. My office is right off the edge of the end of 29 Wright Runway. It's literally 300 feet from the end of the runway. So I get to walk out of my office and look at the departure end of 29 Wright uh, and see the airplanes coming straight at my office. And there are a lot of other businesses and activities that go on around here that are here because of the airport. I also live in the area. My home is 1.6 miles directly off the end of the runways. And so I get uh, to enjoy the ambiance of the airport environment from home too. I've never been disturbed by noise in this area from the aircraft. When I hear an airplane, I get to look up and enjoy the, uh, the environment that I love anyway. There's been a, a movement afoot for many, many years, ever since I've been around this airport, to keep the noise down. Now pilots, we do an awful lot of things to keep the noise levels down. I, for example, fly this airplane out of here very, very carefully. When we take off, we try to do a steep angle of climb to get as high as we possibly can while we're still over the runways. And then when we level off, 800 feet up in the air or so before we really get to residential areas, we pull back the power in the RPM of the, of the engine because the prop speeds, the tips of the props make a lot of noise. And if you pull the RPM back and the power back a little bit, you reduce the noise. And they level off and climb more slowly, but it keeps the noise levels down. We're very careful to fly patterns that stay away from most of the uh, residential areas. I usually fly straight out to the to the ocean uh, and stay on that track until I'm about 1,500 feet above the air or at the coastline before I make a turn. And most of us pilots tend to do that. Now there is a pattern around the airport and for the most part, it's north of the airport. People stay tight into the airport when they go downwind or people take off from 29 right, they turn right, they turn right again, and they stay close to the airport so that they don't get into residential areas. The areas close to the airport are industrial areas. They're business areas. They're not so disturbed by this uh, kind of activity. The south pattern is a little bit more of a problem, but voluntarily almost all of us stay out of the south pattern. We only go into the south pattern when we're instructed to do so for safety reasons by the air traffic control people. Everyone is very concerned about that level of noise and equally concerned about the importance of this airport to the regional economy. This entire area has been an aviation economy since aviation began. We have aviation businesses all, all over the area. We have uh, huge airports uh, not far away from us, LAX, Long Beach are much bigger than we are. And during the pandemic, flight instructors were considered an essential service and flight schools were considered an essential business that could not be shut down during COVID because we needed to train these pilots. So Torrance Airport has become a bit of a center for training pilots and that's a very good thing, but it does mean a few more flights. My practice is an important medical facility for this region. It's a well-known, respected geriatrics practice. Uh, in fact, we're the only geriatricians in the area. So if you want a geriatrician in Torrance, we're it, and we're happy to be so. But we wouldn't be here, frankly, if it weren't for this airport. One of the biggest flight schools in the area right now is the Sling Pilot Academy, and they have a lot of airplanes, and they do a lot of flying out of Torrance. The interesting thing about their airplanes is that they're small and very quiet. 
the noise they make is at least 20, 25 decibels below the limits that the city allows for the level of noise. They're in the 60 decibel range and, and they allow up, in, up into the mid 80s for noise. They interestingly also operate on automobile gasoline, which is lead free. And one of the things that the, that the city and we're all concerned about is the eventual phasing out of lead and gasoline. Uh, this aircraft uses lead and gasoline. It can't run on anything else right now. Uh, they're trying to develop unleaded fuels for it. It's low lead. It doesn't have a lot of lead in it, but it does have some. We need gasolines that don't have it. The Sling Pilot Academy planes all run on car gas that has no lead in it at all, which is a really nice thing. So, so they're not putting any lead into the atmosphere and their noise levels are 20, 30 decibels below what most other airplanes do. But they do a lot of flying. And that is the concern that the local residents have. This academy, though, is training hundreds of future airline pilots at very low prices. Uh, as I recall, I was told it costs about $70,000 to train an airline pilot at Sling. It would be twice that much almost any place else. And young people can afford to go to that school. And we need to feed these uh, new pilots into the aviation system uh, in Southern California and all over the country. Uh, we're way short on commercial pilots. Uh, and this academy is doing a great job of supplying that need at a very affordable price. Hi, my name is Megan Starr. I'm the owner of Starr's Cake. I believe it was Alexis and Carl asking about deals and if we were interested in, you know, giving some kind of a discount since we're so close. And of course I was on board with that. And then both approached me about the event that we had. If I wanted to bring over some cupcakes or some goodies, I gladly joined in. And that was such a fun Saturday, even if it was rainy. <laughs> But um, yeah, it was quite a turnout and we, um, we got quite a bit of business from it. So it was a fun activity. So at the 200 free flight event, we gave away over 500 cupcakes. That was our first one. Uh, we've not been approached by anybody else. So it was, it was really a fun thing to do to just see how things work around here, really. So anyone from Sling gets a 10% discount. Every time uh, anyone earns a rating, they also can come in for a free cupcake. Not inside. Uh, if we're outside, you can definitely see the cool planes taking off and landing, um, but it's not disruptive, certainly inside. Even oh. in back in the kitchen, it, it's a little more noticeable, but you hear ambulances and other trucks and cars, so it's not, it's not any different than that. At the 200, pre-flight event. We definitely saw an increase since then. We're located right along PCH. Uh, the address is 3525 East PCH, uh, Torrance, and uh, we're Suite F, right next to the China Buffet. Uh, good afternoon, my name is John Rubosky. I've been involved in aviation for close to 56 years. My early days of aviation were when my dad would take me to Midway Airport in Chicago and we watch airplanes land at Midway. In those days, it was a three-foot fence around the airport. I enlisted in the Navy in 1965 and was trained in weather. Was interested in aviation in the Navy and went up flying with a few Navy pilots when we were at different places. And when I got out of the Navy, I started my training. Uh, so I think the importance for everyone to realize now is that there is a serious shortage of pilots in, in the world, not just the United States. We don't have the great air shows anymore. We don't have a lot of kids picking it up right after high school. So the importance of a flight academy, be it at Torrance or anywhere else in the nation, is promoting this for young people to get into a, a very, very, very lucrative career. As good as a doctor, lawyer, brain surgeon that's going to college for that st those studies. Trying to explain to the community the importance of aviation and that we operate as quietly as we can. When I retired in 2010, the biggest thing I wanted to do was give back. And I wanted to give back because there were so many people that helped me in my aviation career. So I did things like volunteering at the hospital, uh, but aviation, I stuck with aviation and volunteered. I've been a five or six year volunteer at the Western Museum of Flight. Western Museum of Flight is located here on the airport at Torrance. It's, a, it's an excellent representation of 
the aerospace and aviation industry as it affected Southern California. We've got some very good displays there talking about the satellites, uh, communication satellites, moon and Mars missions, uh, the defense industry here in Northrop that built many airplanes for the defense industry. And uh, that's been very rewarding there at the museum. We bring a lot of students in. We bring a lot of students in right from third, fourth grade level all the way up to middle school. And again, why? To show them some interest in aviation and is that the career path they want to take. Uh, now, many of the airlines are not requiring a full college degree. Now, when I was tr trying to get out with the airlines, you had to have a 737 type rating. Literally, you had to go out and pay yourself for that 737 type rating. That's what the airlines wanted. But nowadays, kids can come out of high school, they can go right to an academy like Sling Academy. I've been very active. I've been to the meetings. I've belonged to the Torrance Airport Association. The approach they've recently taken on, on landing fees and, and discrimination to pilots for turns and all that, I don't believe that was the approach. The approach should be more a training approach, a community outreach approach. Educate all the pilots on, on noise abatement procedures and how to fly quietly. Instead of making ordinances that then will go into litigation and we could spend that money on education. We operate this airplane, this is a Cessna 182, and we operate this airplane as quietly as we can. We climb as fast as we can to keep our footprint, our noise footprint higher and not in out of the airport boundary. We make quiet approaches and uh, we are very aware of the noise abatement and we read up on it and, and are cognizant of it. We've been operating off this airport for about three years, although I had operated out of all the airports here in the Southern California area, jets. I remember when we brought the first company jet into Torrance and we did a, a noise abatement program for that airplane to operate it as quietly as we, as we could. This airplane, a 1961-182, this airplane we operate under noise abatement procedures. We attempt to make our climb as rapidly and as quietly as we can so we get further away from the airport footprint to uh, mitigate the noise. I do not believe that landing fees are going in any way would reduce the operation of the Torrance Airport. They've tried landing fees at the Catalina Airport. Everybody still keeps flying to Catalina. The problem with the landing fees, I think, it, it's almost a detriment to the flight academies. Let's say there's a flight academy here at Torrance. There is, Sling. Another one at Long Beach and somewhere else. They institute landing fees. The, the students can't stop flying. They still have to do the training. So what's going to happen? Maybe their training fees will increase. That's, that's not helping the pilot shortage at all. I think the biggest thing that we'll face, all of us, the, the, the airlines and the passengers traveling, the biggest thing we'll face is that the pilot shortage will start affecting travel. It will delay trips. It, see, the uh, airlines, all the pilots at the airlines, at corporate where I was in charter, you're limited to the hours you, the hours you fly. So at the end of the month, when you're up to your 800, 900,000 hours, that's it. And if there are not pilots to fill your seat, what do we do next? Cancel trips. You could be on the airport at Kennedy or Los Angeles or San Francisco, and your flight to Rome is now delayed, if not canceled, because a crew member has either run out of time or they couldn't complete the schedule for the month. And it, it is a serious issue. Pilots need time to transition. They need time to get their experience. You can't hire on with the airlines tomorrow and be in the captain's seat the next morning. That takes time. And operated out of many smaller airports all around the country. If you refer just to Sling alone, that's one of the quietest airplanes operating for flight training. Long Beach has a lot of flight training going on and they're operating larger airplanes, twin engine airplanes, because they also operate the multi-engine rating. So in, in regards to the noise and the operation of jets on this airport, frequent operation, maybe one or two jets a month, whereas you're dealing with Long Beach, and I mean, Long Beach was a delivery center, a delivery and test center for the Gulfstream jet and that operated in there on a regular basis, multiple operations. You still every now and then will see a Gulfstream come out of Long Beach and go overhead, they're going to Van Nuys or Burbank. So an airport at Long Beach, yes, has the training going on, but yes, they also have commercial jets, 
a commercial operation. They have the corporate jets arriving there. So there are many airports around the country, although they're small airports, the corporate jets are operating at them, which is much noisier than a training airplane. The aviation field is an excellent opportunity for someone who didn't want to pursue a, a full college education. It's an excellent career. You could get into it at any point. I mean, you could solo when you're 16 and uh, continue on. An air transport pilot certificate, which you need in many of the airlines to fly in the captain's seat, of course, is 21. But again, you're training towards that and you have to start somewhere, a flight academy somewhere whether it's Torrance, Long Beach, or any other airport in this country that is trying to involve kids or young people in aviation and pursue that career. So don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave a comment. It really helps us with our channel. We really appreciate it. Have a try of an uh, authentic Italian cappuccino. I'll make one for you guys. Nice.